Hello everyone, a very good afternoon to all of you. I am Anand, welcoming you all on behalf of Solar Quarter and First View Group to our webinar on Evolving CNI Solar Projects in Oman, Unlocking Complete Potential with Energy Storage. Thank you all the attendees for joining us today. I hope you had a great time networking with your peers in our exhibition tables. If you have not visited, no worries. The platform will be open till 5.30 p.m. today, so you can start networking. So before starting today's proceedings, I take this opportunity to thank and welcome our partner for this event, SunGrow. I request my team to please play the sponsor video. The sun, a universal source of energy, shines brightly to illuminate our environment. We feel the warmth and embrace the winds of change. SunGrow harnesses the gift of nature into clean power for all. We are a massive workforce equipped with years of experience and industry know-how who turn passion into action, who transform concepts into real-world solutions, who take market demands and create world-class service platforms. We are forerunners of technology. We are witnesses to the clean energy era. We are leading the global mission by offering high efficiency solutions to a wide range of users. We are a reliable partner. For us, reliability and excellence mean a commitment to continuous improvement, an unwavering aspiration for innovation, a meticulous testing process, a robust manufacturing capability, Full attention to detail ensures the reliability and efficiency of each and every product and solution. In order to feed our hunger of reaching customer success, we use technological innovation as the source of power in the pursuit of sustainable efficiency. Our goal is to replace the traditional fossil fuel model by perfecting new energy conversion technology to deliver clean energy to millions of households. We are committed to remaining a global leader in power conversion technology. Leading the era of efficient, clean electric power, accelerating a collective global mission of renewable energy transition. Together, we will embrace the future under our slogan, clean power, for all. Thank you, team. Thank you. So now, without any further ado, I'd like to invite Mr. Anoop Kuthor Unni from Sunro to give his presentation. Anoop, sir, you can share your screen. Hi, Anand. Uh, I think I uh, hope you can see my screen right yes, now. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, myself, uh, Anub Kutur, uh, representing SunGrow uh, Middle East. And I'm the technical director of SunGrow uh, Middle East and Africa. Uh, so today, uh, we would like to uh, introduce our new products uh, in c and uh, BSA Solutions for Oman. This is the product name is called uh, the ST129CP50HV. So the first is the product's application area, like the product is mainly focusing to service in the c &I area. Like one is for the demand management, where we have an excess power, that power saving. And second one is peak value and arbitrate. So we can say that in the lower uh, times, that is early morning and early evenings, you can charge it. And whenever you have a daytime speaks and evening time speak, you can just discharge the battery. And the third one is like maximizing the self uh, consumption. For example, if the, the grid limit is there and you have an excess energy from the PV, you can store it and you can discharge it. And the fourth case is like an a pure off grid, like a backup power system. 
the most one um, the last one is the microgrids which is uh, going to uh, make integrations with the uh, dg pv and etc so uh, this is the uh, cndi ess solution sld you can see that the uh, the symbol sld the product is available in the 400 volt uh, grid couplings the left hand side is the pv inverters and the pv modules which is nothing but uh, sun grow cx uh, series inverters which is available at 400 volt uh, output at grid, grid connection points and the st129 cp50 hv this is the product name it is coming with a battery and pcs both are two different cabinets and we call as a product is st129 cp50 hv you can connect the load into that common uh, grid point and the key features of this st129 cp50 hv the product is the pcs rating is 50 kilowatt you can scale up up to 1 megawatt and the batteries are designed to capable to support two to five hours backups when we move to the ec installation this product is uh, designed for uh, outdoor application so the product itself having c5 and decoration uh, uh, grade protections and the cabinet is ip54 uh, outdoor suitables and uh, the product itself uh, having an, a smart uh, inbuilt uh, ems which can uh, communicate between the dg and the PV inverters and the battery as uh, so, sorry uh, the battery as well as and the PCS as well. Uh, these are the uh, modular designs. You can see the picture uh, left hand side. The pictures is the battery cabinets. The item number one is the battery which is stacked inside, and the item number two is called for the uh, battery disconnectors. So the entire battery is coming within a complete uh, unit where we will have an HVAC inbuilt as well. Moving to the right hand side picture, the AC cabinets. Again, this is an IP, IP54 outdoor cabinets, which will have a, a PCS, a transformers, and the local monitoring and EMS. So when we're talking about the local monitoring, that monitoring device will be going to communicate all the communication device, which is available in the uh, entire products. So the electrical and monitoring diagrams, uh, this is a, a schematic diagram for the solutions. So when we're talking about the solution for uh, SunGrow CNI BSS uh, systems, we have uh, AC outdoor cabinet and battery outdoor cabinet. So one uh, AC outdoor cabinet, 50 kilowatt PCS can be connected maximum to two battery banks. So the each battery banks are rated from 101 to 129 kilowatt hour so you can make it the maximum size with the 50 kilowatt is 258 the minimum you can go for a single piece a single battery which is 101.3 so you have a various combination can be uh, selected by using a uh, uh, combination of single battery units multi battery units and the single battery units itself there is a six range is coming so it's starting from 101 to 129 and when you look into the SLD, you can see each battery cabinets having an inbuilt HVAC, firefighting and BMS systems. All the communications will be going to the local controllers. The local controller is placed in the AC outdoor cabinets. And the AC uh, outdoor cabinets will have uh, uh, the EMS and the EMS will be only one for the one system. So in case if you are supplying a uh, 250 kilowatt PCS into one's project locations, the EMS will be available in the master PCS and the output of the PCS is 400 volt uh, four wire system. So this is the detailing of communication diagram. So for example, if you are going to connect two battery bank with one PCS, then the first battery banks will have a battery management unit and HVAC and firefighting systems. All the communications will be going to loop into the common um, uh, monitoring units. From there, it will be connected to the local controller. Similar way, the battery cabinet 2 is also going to connect with the local controller. Once all the signal is coming to the local controller, and the local, local controller will have an additional switch where the EMS will be integrated. And the EMS can be going to communicate further with uh, uh, any other similar uh, communication protocol. So this is a simplified solution of the communication diagram. And when we're talking about the products uh, in parallel connections, as we uh, know, uh, the market's requirements sometimes vary from off-grid to on-grid and the different uh, application scenarios. So when it is going for an off-grid applications, we can scale up to maximum six units in parallel. 
and when it is going to act as an on-grid applications we can do paralleling of 20 units and the batteries are uh, going to support uh, either it's one pcs with the two battery or uh, one pcs with one battery or a lot of combinations so depending upon the requirements the load requirements the designing engineers can do a lot of combinations so uh, that's uh, mainly depending upon the designs of uh, the systems as well as the analyzing for the load profile of the uh, site actual conditions so when we're talking about the products uh, uh, features like ec installations like as we discussed uh, uh, the products is a pure outdoor products so you can go for a direct uh, outdoor installations and the product is ip54 protection and c5 anti corrosion uh, uh, features for the cabinets so hence you can go for the coastal applications or highly polluted industrial area etc now when we're talking about the outdoor applications the same products also is possible to go for indoor applications but uh, need to be uh, maintained enough space between the cabinets to cabinets to take uh, the heat exchanger etc now when we are talking uh, the products uh, integration with the pv industry you know uh, uh, cni products especially for the bss along with the supply this will work as an off grid but uh, when uh, we are talking about the renewable sectors always it uh, need to be connected with the pv plan so the communications is a mode bus protocol if it is there so local controller and ems can com com uh, communicate with uh, com 100 and all the details can be uh, uh, monitored through isolar cloud mode so in this case like pcs battery hvac firefightings will be monitored through local controller whereas the pv inverters and energy meters or any kind of uh, uh, relays can be monitored through uh, EMS and finally that plan can be controlled uh, by a common point. So the products uh, when we're talking uh, like a CNI markets uh, we have a special features in our uh, uh, ST129 CP 50HV that it has an inbuilt HVAC unit. So the left hand side pictures is the battery cabinets where you can see that the hot air will uh, go up and it will be uh, 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 go back side of the cabinets. So uh, the HVAC units are uh, inbuilt and intelligent temperature control systems is available for our uh, battery cabinets. Whereas the PCS is a smart air cooling system, the same uh, cooling uh, technology which is implemented in all SunGrow CX and HX series inverters. The products uh, as an inbuilt uh, fire uh, fighting and uh, uh, fire sensing equipment. So this is very easy to replace wherever uh, required. Like the content of uh, the uh, modules is uh, HFC 225. That is a cleaning execution edge. Now the operation scenario, uh, the CNI markets like we will have with the different applications. So the image which is representing the end air connections without the DG. So the first one is a battery and AC cabinets. So the DC power supply is converted into AC and it will couple to the common points where the PV inverter is coupled. So generally, uh, this is application. This product is applied for 400 voltage system. So SunGrow CX models like whether 33 CX, 50 CX, 40 CX, or 110 CX can be connected directly to the common coupling points. And EMS will be uh, a part of the main uh, AC cabinets. And for the PV plants monitoring, you need to have an additional COM 100E or 100A depending upon the plant size. Now, for the right hand side, you can see the multiples options. So when you just go for an off grid options, you have a PV and ESS combinations and PV, ESS and DG. And when it is an on grid, you have a PC as constant power and PCS control power, peak value and average and schedules. So we are discussing all these points in the coming slides. So when you're talking about the PCS constant power charging mode, so the image is clear, uh, clear representation like you have a PV modules power is excess, then excess power will be fed into the load points and parallelly it will be charged to the battery. So this is called the constant power charging mode. When it is a discharging modes like you have uh, the uh, uh, load is more uh, load requirement is more. So in that cases, the PV power and the battery is in the discharge mode. So both collectively going to support for the load. 
when we move into the maximizing self consumptions like you know when it is getting integrated with the pv with the uh, battery source so the day times the power will be coming with the pv and it will be get it uh, charged and the night time there is no power is available in the pv so in that cases it will be in discharge mode so in that cases this will acting as an off grid so you need to size the systems uh, based on the load requirements in peak valley uh, uh, arbitrate basically like uh, there are some uh, some uh, clients uh, will have to pay more power during the peak power uh, consumption area for example in daytime some 8 to 12 and evening 6 to uh, 8 so this uh, systems will be charging during the uh, uh, low or peak times from the grid or any other source especially grid only because you don't have any solar in this range and it will be discharged during the peak hours so you can reduce your uh, the uh, power tariff uh, payments so this is called the peak and uh, valley arbitrage and moving to the uh, scheduling option so we have uh, uh, every uh, day we can make it uh, 10 schedules so 7 into 10 modes so that is something like in a system based on the requirement sometimes you can control for a particular start time and end time as a pcs control mode whether it is charging mode whether it is discharging mode so every project you have to analyze load profile very clearly and implement the schedules otherwise you will not have an economical design for the system the last one is the uh, most uh, uh, people are interested is the off-grid operations of the cni uh, bss solutions so you can see here a battery cabinets and ac cabinets like our cni st129 cp is connected with a dg unit and uh, there is no uh, grid is available so this is called as a 100 percentage off grid mode applications so here we need to check uh, basically uh, 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 the dg capacity and we need to arrive the correct pv uh, and we need to also need to arrive the, what is the best so best capacity for the the pcs so when we talking about the best capacity of the pcs you need to uh, the maximum size in off-grid application we discussed earlier stage that is uh, six units in parallel so you can go for maximum is 300 kilowatt is a pcs rating and you can go for P, uh, pv inverter as you required based on your load requirement so you have to study very carefully the load and uh, load profile the dg characteristics and then you have to uh, rightly size the uh, battery and the pcs units so uh, in, in the last, uh, we are talking about the global uh, SunGrow's ESS references. So at uh, 2020, we are already close 800 megawatt hour storage, which is mainly applicable for uh, CNDI as well as the utilities. Uh, that's all uh, from my side, the short presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for this insightful presentation and for setting the tone for today's event. So now it's time to begin our much awaited panel discussion, which is on evolving CNI solar projects in Oman, unlocking complete potential with energy storage. And to discuss this, we have in the panel with us, Mr. Ma Marcel Combrink from SunGrow, Mr. LK Verma from Power and Sun, Mr. Amrit Mandal, from Hussam Technology Company, Mr. Shivang Tiwari from Omasco, Mr. Swapnil Singhai from Oman Solar System Corporation LLC. The discussion will be led by Mr. Aftab Raza from Fine Value. Uh, so attendees, please note that if you have any question, please post them in the Q&A box. Our panelists will take them at the end of the session. Now, I welcome all the panelists on the screen and requesting Aftab, sir, to lead the discussion. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Anand. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, our audience, our distinguished speakers. I'm honored uh, to be part of this uh, discussion. Uh, we have a lineup of amazing uh, speakers uh, today. Uh, before we uh, turn to the speakers, uh, let me introduce briefly about myself. Uh, a very brief intro. Uh, I'm leading a Canada-based consulting firm which provides um, advisory services to governments, utilities, and regulators. 
uh, in the energy industry, uh, mainly on the utility regulation and finance. Uh, I have uh, electrical engineering and MBA finance degrees with uh, over 27 years of experience across the value chain uh, of the in energy industry. Um, over two decades, I worked uh, with the Department of Energy Abu Dhabi at various uh, senior management positions, uh, especially uh, towards the end at the Director of Economic Regulation and Head of uh, Sector Financial Management. Uh, turning to this uh, uh, panel discussion, we will be focusing on the uh, solar and uh, storage, uh, energy storage projects in Oman, how they are evolving, the opportunities and challenges. And we will hear from our distinguished uh, panelists, uh, their plans and their experience uh, in this industry. To set the scene for our discussion, I just want to highlight a few key drivers for, for the evolving uh, solar and energy, uh, energy project developments, not only in Oman, but across the world. Uh, the, the first and the foremost, uh, as we have seen um, this year, early this year, actually last month, we had COP26 climate change uh, summit, the global summit in Glasgow. Uh, where uh, we saw uh, the governments and the nations uh, setting up the plans to reduce the emissions, um, to, to keep the global warming, global temperatures below 1.5 degree or 2 degrees Celsius uh, above the pre-industrial levels. So that sustainability or climate change is the main driver for many uh, initiatives, uh, including the solar project. Uh, and and the and the battery storage in my view the next driver which which is uh, which should be the most uh, uh, important driver i think for the solar uh, and the battery storage projects are the falling cost or falling prices of the solar panel and the battery storage i was looking at a, a recent uh, us report came out for 2021 showing around 10 to 13% reduction in these um, uh, pv uh, modules and the battery storage. Obviously, we have uh, experts and our speakers who have the ground uh, knowledge, the real uh, uh, how much reduction in the cost and the improvement in the performance they are expecting or they are seeing in the in this segment, very important segment, uh, particularly on the the uh, commercial and industrial uh, segment of of the usage. Then we see uh, other drivers as well. <clears throat> when we see the utilities are increasing their electricity tariffs for the industries and commercial customers and introducing time of use tariffs, which vary from uh, time to time during the day or during the month uh, or during the year, they are also in incentivizing the industries uh, and the commercial customers to move towards the solar uh, based projects and, and, and battery storage. Um, our experts have a very diversified experience. Um, I want to make one, one point. I see all of these projects must make economic sense for both for the for the companies who are offering these services, these equipment, but uh, but more on the customer side who provide the market. Um, if they see these uh, solar projects and battery storage projects are providing them the supply of electricity. Uh, at terms, at cost, which are more attractive or, or cheaper than the grid supply, then they will switch to these supplies. And I want to hear from our speakers soon uh, what are the, the opportunities they are seeing in this regard and what are the challenges covering both uh, on-grid and off-grid uh, solutions. So let's turn to our, our speakers. Um, I will invite um, one by one our speakers to introduce themselves. Um, so let's start with our first speaker, um, Mr. Marcel Combrink, who is the country manager of at the GCC region for Sen Group. Uh, Marcel, if you can introduce yourself and your organization and can uh, take a few minutes to, to enlighten us with your uh, plans for the on-grid, off-grid uh, solar um, and battery projects for the commercial and industrial uh, segments in Oman. What are your plans? What are the, the opportunities you are seeing? Please. 
Over to you, Marcel. Thank you, Mr. Aftab. Uh, yes, um, my name is Marcel Komrink. Uh, I'm based in Dubai. I look after the GCC regions for SunGrow from a residential to the utility scale size. Uh, my experience, my background, previously I used to work for a generator company that introduced uh, solar into the, the company as a division. I've been in the renewable energy industry for 10 to 15 years now. Uh, I'm South African, so I come from areas where power is very bad. So uh, I'm quite excited, to be honest, I'm quite excited about Oman. There's multiple opportunities. Like you said, uh, electricity needs, if it's expensive, then uh, it it helps the, the project more. But there's also other ways which we will get into later in the discussion. But thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Marcel. But before we move to our next speaker, uh, Marcel, do you want to share with us uh, any uh, projects uh, you have in the queue for in Oman or in the UAE uh, or you have plans very briefly so we're working together with some key key clients on 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 energy storage and it's in the CNI side of the business uh we've got one or two for Oman uh we've got much more in in in, in northern Africa and some other uh countries in the GCC so, but definitely the, the market is increasing and it's climbing quite fast. So we need to stay on top of it. Thank you very much, Marcel. Uh, let's move to our next uh, panelist, um, Mr. LK Verma, who is the Managing Director of Power and Sun. Uh, Mr. Verma, if you can introduce yourself, um, your organization, uh, the opportunities you're seeing in the C&I segment, um, uh, elsewhere and particularly in Oman. Over to you, Verma. Thank you. Uh, you are mute if you can. Thanks, Aftab, and thanks uh, actually, Solar Quarter, uh, for organizing this event. A very quick introduction uh, of as you have made it mandatory to introduce yourself. So I'm LK Verma. I started uh, Power and Sun uh, in 2016-17, and uh, um, I'm actually a mechanical engineer uh, now in a solar industry for more than uh, more than eight to nine years. I did my business leadership with Harvard and I am Bangalore. I've spent 18, 19 years in a corporate world, uh, uh, mostly on that side of a table, you know, planning and designing strategies and making them implement and all. Last 11 years, 12 years, I'm a, I've become an entrepreneur. As Mr. Aftab said, uh, there is apart from the apart from making your visions, you know, possible. There is on your financial and your commercial aspects. It's also a passion which is required. So solar has become our passion. Uh, this is uh, my introduction. Power and Sun uh, is uh, is basically an integrated solar component supplier. Uh, we are, uh, if I have to define it in a very simple words, we are a, we are actually a demand aggregator. We aggregate a market demand on a real time basis, sum up together, draw projections, create forecast, and place orders on behalf of developers and EPCs for three months and six months in advance. Uh, this model was uh, designed and started by us in this industry and in this region because. I believe uh, uh, around 75 to 80 percent of time and time, money, and energy is spent actually in making the materials available to site, whether it is uh, whether it is on grid product, uh, you know, actually project or it is off grid project. So this 70 to 80 percent of the time, uh, money, and the energy, if this is managed uh, well. And we are able to work on uh, on improving the efficiency. We will be able to contribute, uh, if not significantly on a cost basis, at least two three percent. But on a time basis, you know, twenty five to thirty percent, we can reduce the project turnaround time by by doing a master planning of the materials, which consume seventy to eighty percent of the time. So that's our focus area. We move uh, close to around one fifty to uh, one sixty, one seventy. Actually, megawatt uh, uh, per year. 
that means we buy stock and sell uh, pv modules inverters uh, cables connectors combiner boxes structures everything uh 2020 i mean 20 because of a covid there was little restrictions in terms of expansions but we are now uh, 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 in india south africa jordan uh, dubai and uh, possibly by the mid of the next year in europe as well your question now was third part you know third part of my answer and of your question that how are we contributing it on a cni sector and especially on the energy storage i mean one area i always uh, believe very firmly that it is the cni sector which is which of course the residential also but residential doesn't give you the volumes and the value which is required for a industry to move so cni is is, is one uh, sector which uh, uh, touches uh, many people uh, it moves value uh, moves and this is the right sector which can set the pace of solarization in the region pace of solarization in terms of uh, megawatt generated in terms of uh, value invested in a renewable energy in terms of people connected with it and when i say the speed of solarization it means that uh, with a given resources in a year if you are if we are installing 40 megawatt or a 50 megawatt with the same resources can you install 70 megawatt or 80 megawatt and how this can be achieved so that not uh, not only uh, uh, you know the one or two actually stakeholders which gain but the complete value chain and the consumers also gains out of it so I hope, uh, Mr. Raza, I have replied all your uh, one, two, three questions. Thank you very much, uh, Ilke Verma. Very uh, impressive uh, background, both you and uh, Marcel shared, and very diversified. I would say we are already seeing very diversified uh, uh, experience uh, and interest uh, from our speakers. I hope our audience will find uh, them very interesting, very useful. Um, both of you. And, and this this panel, this uh, discussion is about um, the C&I segment. My background is more on the utility scale uh, projects. And I want to really learn from our speakers on the C&I because I personally believe that the solar uh, uh, PV modules, for example, uh, solar projects, they have the biggest usage in or their biggest advantages in their uh, modular nature and the smallness. Uh, rather than only in the utility skill projects. And you have, uh, uh, Verma, you have uh, highlighted this point quite uh, uh, firmly. I would move to our third uh, distinguished panel <coughs> member, Mr. Amrit Mandel, <coughs> oh, yeah. who is the manager uh, solar at Hussam Technology Company. Amrit, if you can also introduce yourself, your company, and similar to our previous uh, members, uh, what are the opportunities you are seeing uh, uh, in, in Oman or elsewhere in the C&I segment? So, uh, thank, you, yeah. thank you very much, Mr. Aftab, for giving me the opportunity. And thank you very much uh, to Solar Quarter to organize this wonderful uh, webinar. Uh, it helped us to everybody to connect, uh, uh, I mean, to connect and share the uh, inputs and outputs of this uh, entire region. Uh, so, uh, myself, Amrit, and uh, I have joined the Hussein or a technology company two years back, uh, pre-COVID era. So, uh, and uh, I've been, uh, uh, I've been take up the op op responsibility for the engineering and uh, project management in the company. So, uh, if, if I may allow, then I would like to present something. Uh, I'd like to present uh, my screen here. Uh, should I go Please, Amrit, if we can, yes, if we can do it in a few minutes so that we can have others. Please go ahead. Sure. Thank, thank you very much. So, so my screen is visible, right? I hope my screen is visible. Yes, Amrit. Okay. So, uh, our company started in 2006 as a, uh, a telecom uh, telecom system integrating company and in 2016 we started uh, studying into the CNI solar project markets uh, by 2017 we we were the we were the first company in Oman to uh, to install and commission the first AER which is now APSR 
approved a grid connected solar PV system. And then we move at, we then we uh, went on to explore more into solar training in 2017. We started a new uh, venture into that. In 2019, we uh, we have done uh, solar consulting work for uh, all the airports in Oman. It was around uh, 20 megawatt of projects, uh, 20 megawatt uh, in a cumulative way. And we we also in 2020 we completed the ISO certifications. Uh, we were we were among the very few in Oman who uh, very few SMEs in Oman who have the all these three ISO certifications 9001 to uh, 14001 and 45001. Uh, also, we provide services from uh, system integrating to uh, solar system monitoring, uh, maintenance of system, energy efficiency, and metering. Uh, also, we are venturing into uh, solar uh, solar and wind sector as well uh, as a hybrid model. Uh, also, we we provide consulting uh, consultancy work. Uh, we provide uh, like construction, uh, cons uh, the subcontracting works for the uh, large scale utility scale projects, testing commission and calibration for the large scale utility projects. We have done projects for Aqua uh, for their their 500 megawatt site in Ibri. Uh, this is uh, we have done the uh, R&D. We have uh, we have uh, established two R&D sites for them. Uh, also, uh, we have done similar projects for PDO in recent times. And uh, so we also, uh, the HSE policy is very uh, stringent here in, uh, I mean, in our, uh, we actually follow all the aspects uh, to uh, to ensure the safety of our uh, uh, people around us and uh, our team and the, uh, on the, on the client side as well. So all these are telecom projects so fiber lying a tower installation uh, fiber monitoring uh, installation uh, amrit your voice is breaking okay we have uh, a little bit interruption on Amrit's side. Um, so while we wait for uh, Amrit to come back and uh, uh, and enlighten us with with his experience, very amazing experience, I must say. And I had few questions already in my mind to ask uh, uh, Amrit. But let's move to our uh, next uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Shivang Tiwari, uh, Assistant Manager, Renewable Energy. Uh, at uh, Amasco, uh, Oman Marketing and Services Company. Uh, Shivang, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you can also uh, introduce uh, uh, yourself, your organization, and if you want to share some uh, uh, some experience of Amasco, uh, your organization in the C&I segment. Thank you. Over to you, Shivang. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Mr. Aftab and Solar Quarter for providing this great platform. It's really interesting to you know interact uh, at this level. Uh, coming to my uh, introduction, uh, my name is Shivang, and I am handling a solar photovoltaic portfolio for Omasco. I have been into solar from almost nine years now, and uh, out of nine, I have been for six years. I was working in India and commercial and utility scale projects. And then I came over to Oman, where the market was still, you know, uh, still it's a new market, but that three years back, it was still very new to solar at that point. So uh, after that, I have been taking care of commercial and residential projects. And uh, about Omasco, uh, Omasco is a company uh, almost 40 years in business now. Uh, and majorly, uh, they have been known by the name of Panasonic and Honda in the market. Plus, uh, we are a subsidiary of uh, Al Futem Group, uh, Al Futem Group uh, of Dubai or UAE. You can say Omar Al Futem Group. We are a subsidiary of that group here. And uh, in solar, we have been working for uh, almost four years. And our first project was actually a commercial project. It was for headquarters of a discon, uh, which you know distribution company, electrical distribution company called Mazoon Electricity. We did first project for them. And after that, we have been involved in approximately 35, 40 odd projects, which we have done in the sector. And uh, most of them have been residential uh, projects, uh, commercial projects. I will not say a majority, but yes, uh, 
uh, as as we move into the discussion we'll come to know the uh, the situation of commercial segment the potential which it holds in, in this market because it's i would say it's yet to come up and uh, as what mr verma was saying that this is the this is the segment which actually moves the complete uh, market forward in terms of you know when you talk about solarization of a particular economy in terms of you know what share do you have uh, of solar or, or renewable in an uh, of your energy portfolio so uh, about commercial segment it still i would say has a lot to grow and a lot to learn uh, from the industry perspective like the customer side uh, a lot of know how has to happen uh, and uh, they i would say people know about it but uh, somewhere covid somewhere other situations have been responsible for you know not uh, taking it or you know embracing it on a full scale so that is something which is there but uh, as it holds great promises definitely for the coming years because once this segments open up you know i don't know maybe you will find uh, 20 more speakers in next webinar who will be more more experienced so uh, that that's how it is and as, as we move forward into the uh, discussion we would you know i would explain a bit more what we what i can share thank you very much shivank it's very uh, uh, thank you very much for sharing your your knowledge and and your introduction um you and the previous speaker uh, clearly highlighted uh, that you have a strong presence uh, on ground in oman and uh, we want to hear from you more about oman um, uh, focusing on the c and i uh, now we will move to our uh, next uh, panelist mr swapnil uh, uh, singhal manager sales and marketing at oman solar systems uh, swapnil welcome and please if you can introduce again we had brief chat uh, before the webinar but for our audience if you can again share uh, your introduction um, the organization you are representing and any uh, opportunities in the cndi you are seeing thank you over okay. to you sapan thank you mr rafiq just small uh, it's a singhai not single uh, my name okay beside is swapnil singhai uh, 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 i am from oman solar systems i am working here as a, as a manager i look after sales and marketing uh, however i look after project management as a, as a whole cycle of the project uh, just just i would like to convey because i can see a lot of uh, uh, participants or audience we can see from various part of the globe so i would say good evening namaskar uh, uh, salam alaikum adab okay so now see yes this is very interesting i have definitely uh, we all were looking forward for this kind of session uh, to address to the industry which i would say is still untouched or untapped which can be catered easily we as an oman solar we got established in 1991 we are uh, probably one of the oldest company i always quote for oman solar each one of us cannot do great things but each one of us can do small thing greatly so oman solar is one of uh, the potential uh, solar uh, uh, player in in an entire gcc region we got uh, in since 9, 1991 uh, we has been serving to various uh, sort of uh, solutions to the entire uh, mina region not only in mina even we had extended our support to middle east asia africa uh, country like senegal uh, kenya nigeria and uh, gcc anyway we are very strong uh, as long as our presence is concerned uh, uh, our solutions are addressing mainly to the off grid market because as we all know oman has been off grid market since uh, 2017 and then uh, uh, by by great efforts of the of the government uh, they have come up with a with a frame agreement in place the the framework has been in place now we, they came up with the shahim one scheme which is addressing to the industrial segment to talk about the rooftop system and then uh, in 2019 late they came up with the shahim two scheme which is addressing to the residential scheme uh, Uh, now as long as our solutions are concerned we are the company who who has deployed all sort of critical and most uh, difficult jobs in in uh, in a market 
majorly, uh, as I said, we have been on to off-grid market. So we have installed uh, uh, solutions uh, to most of the prestigious client base Oman, like uh, oil and gas sector, PDO, uh, OGC, or PIC. Then we also cater a telecom, Omantel, Orido. Then we got uh, ministries, MOH, MOD, RCA, ROP. So we have a very, very strong client base. And the success mantra for Oman Solar is uh, since 1991, uh, of course, our, our team who has made uh, uh, our name big and big in the market just because they are still with us. So we have our team who are with us since uh, day one. So almost 20, 25 years plus experience they are carrying with us and they are still with us. So that's one of the strength of Oman Solar. Number two, we as a company, uh, uh, we are not uh, uh, we are not solution probably selling company. We we try to buy the pain of the of the customer because most of the uh, customer who came to us or who are coming to us with the expectation to provide the solution which should perform. Because in solar industry, what I have seen, uh, company is they get into but maybe two years, three years, uh, they don't deliver uh, or reach to the expectation of the client and then simply they vanish. So we are in the market from last 30 years just because of our, our uh, services, the kind of solutions we have given to the market. About me, uh, 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 by, by profession, I'm an electrical engineer. I have done ambient international business from uh, India itself. Um, I am carrying around 16 years of experience. I am passionate about solar. That's why uh, I am I am uh, in, in this industry probably. Uh, uh, out of 16 years, 10 years, I have been dedicating to this industry. And uh, I was based in uh, in UAE also uh, till 2016. Then I, in 2016, I moved in Oman. In Oman, just because of Oman Solar. So that is one of my... Uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, trust on, on this company. And that's how I had even tried to build the trust with my customers and try to uh, buy their uh, pain and try to deliver the services to the client. Uh, the solution which we are looking at, see, as a Oman, I mean, Oman Solar, we have addressed to all sort of solutions uh, as long as solar is concerned. Uh, just to mention, we are part of Al-Bhaja group of company. Al-Bhaja is uh, established in 1949 and we got around 40 companies under the umbrella. So Oman Solar is one of them. We got established in 1991. So Al-Bhaja, uh, we got Nuhas Oman Cable, we got Oman Pharmaceutical, we got Oman Cable, uh, Nuhas Cable and we got some restaurants, we got some shopping malls. So group wise, we are very diversified. We got some contracting business as well, uh, Al Bhaja Contracting Company. That is our sister concern. Uh, Oman Solar, uh, we have everything in house. We we right from concept to commissioning, we do everything by own. So we never go to any outsourcing as long as our services or our design engineering is concerned. That is probably one of our core, which always help us to deliver to the client, and they always come back to us. Uh, when we talk about the solution, so uh, as 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 market demands, uh, because oil and gas sector is one of the difficult or uh, most tricky uh, kind of uh, client, you know, who doesn't know anything, but still we need to serve everything. It's like that. They come with that expectation. So those kind of solution we have given, either it's on hilltop, maybe uh, uh, on the seaside, or maybe in the middle of desert, uh, you know, so our engineering, our expertise really help us a lot to, to win the uh, uh, confidence of the client. And that's how we always get involved uh, at the conceptual stage, at, at the very beginning of the project. And that's how then we get into the detail engineering and then finally deliver to the client. We have done all sort of off-grid solutions. We have done grid connected system. We have done first grid, grid connected system when even policies was not in place in Oman. So we did some couple of prior, uh, pilot project for uh, SQU, for Sohar University, for uh, uh, Geotech German University. Those more on the on the on the uh, educational purpose. Those are uh, uh, like in, in the range of 50 kilowatt and all. But apart from that, we have done some good sizable business in grid connected as well. 
battery operator has been our backbone uh, but those are not uh, uh, to the i would say utility scale uh, project those are small medium sized projects so now this pro uh, session is definitely going to be very interesting uh, for myself as well as for the for the company and 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 much bigger picture for the for the for the uman as in as in country to address or to uh, to try to tap those uh, those uh, still i would say virgin areas thanks a lot thank you very much mr Abdul. thank you sir pril singh bhai um you have very strong presence uh, on the ground in Oman and you have touched on some of the important uh, uh, points uh, in the development of solar and battery storage in Oman. I want to build up on, on that discussion and I will go back to our panels, uh, other panel members in a minute. But let me start with few uh, specific questions because you have touched on this one, uh, Sopnil. Um, what do you see as the current status of the battery storage integration with the solar in, in general and and oman um and um because you mentioned that uh although you have not done um uh, and i don't see even a lot of projects on the battery integration uh with the utility skill solar projects in the region um we are all by the way uh have experience from the countries including the gcc countries and and india and africa uh, Marcel from South Africa, having the experience from there, these countries are all blessed with the uh, abundance of, of solar energy. Uh, but the, the battery integration is a new uh, dimension uh, with, the, with the solar. And we see, or at least I see it increasing uh, as, the, as the prices go down. But from your perspective, um, what do you see as uh, uh, battery integration with the solar in Oman? Uh, before I go to more specific uh, questions, of me. Okay, I will just try to touch upon on some of the points. Uh, if you see uh, the Oman or even GCC, if I can make it a little broader, 40% is the residential customer, uh, 40 to 41%. Then. 20% we are talking about commercial and another 20% as an industrial. Then we are left with another 20% which is addressing to the uh, agriculture and some uh, transportation. If if we talk about Oman, because Oman has got a lot of green uh, areas so which uh, also cater the agriculture in, 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 in a good uh, significant way. Now, the moment we talk, uh, talk about battery storage, we see by and large, if in, in a macro level, we see only two opportunities. One, the area which has been electrified. So, of course, now since government has come up with the Shahim 1 and Shahim 2 screen, so we, we got the solution with the grid connected system. That grid connected system, as per regulatory, uh, there is no provision to use battery. So, this become as an opportunity to address the grid connected uh, solution. But this is a bad news for the for the for the companies, those who are trying to add battery on the same system, which I, I was just going through the uh, presentation by Mr. Anup and they really got very good product. But I'm not sure how it will help us to address those uh, grid connected uh, applications. Now, the second area, which is much bigger and broader, I would say, because we all agreed uh, on a business aspect. These are the area which brings uh, volumes. And that's how we are here and we want to add to the industry. These areas are either remote areas because one good point uh, for Oman uh, uh, with great work done by the government, uh, what I can see Oman uh, it is a very uh, area wise also it's very big you know, compared to UAE and you know other uh, uh, other GCC region after KSU Oman is uh, second largest but they covered uh, Oman uh, almost in each and every corner areas are electrified roads are there uh, water electricity available infrastructure is there so that itself brings very good opportunity uh, as long as business is concerned but since it's oil driven uh, country so we are also having some of the challenges to uh, cater the areas where uh, for example pdo 
they they got uh, huge pipelines uh, in the in the, in, in kilometers and they don't have electricity so that's where we come in picture and we get the solution to operate any of their equipment throughout the pipeline but these if we see the bigger picture where we want to address to the solution battery operated then these solutions are in in, in middle of desert which are presently either operating on generator or these are the camp which they got all sort of facilities to the load wise the power generation requirement is megawatt or even above, which they want to operate for 24 hours. That's another aspect of the education which really required. Unfortunately, ecosystem in Oman is not reached to the level which we all are expecting. We are trying, let's see. So then education is required, you know, because what happened even sometime we, we came across some of the villa owner uh, they are also coming up with the mindset oh i i still i don't need to use uh, electricity i want to use solar as a primary source of power yes technically it is possible but commercially it may not be viable because the generation cost of the of the battery operator system is higher than the cost what they are probably they are paying to the government However, government has now removed the subsidiary, so that become little bit interesting as, as a business model. The ROI has become more interesting, but it's still, I would say, a lot of work is required. The, the battery core, the operation, uh, the ecosystem, these are some of the challenges which we are facing. And of course, on top of that, if some good technology is available and some good education system is available, yes, these all can be addressed and Great. taken care well. Thank you, Sapnil. I think I will take the same question with a little bit more uh, for uh, Shivan to, to contribute to this discussion, especially focusing on the off-grid uh, energy storage. Um, do you agree, Shivan, that there are more um, opportunities or uh, uh, application areas of this technology, the off-grid uh, energy storage, particularly in Oman? And... Um, so April has highlighted some of the challenges. I also want you to, to share your take on, on those challenges. But before I, I go to Shivanka, I just want to share what Sapril has mentioned. Uh, I personally see that there are two forces um, working from two opposite directions to support the battery storage, uh, uh, whether off-grid, uh, on-grid, if it is allowed by the regulator. And this is another topic of my own interest how you all guys, all, all the speakers uh, see the regulatory challenges, the government permitting certain things and not permitting certain things. So they create them, themselves some opportunities, but at the same time, some, some challenges. So how you change your business model. But before I go to those ones, two forces which I see, and I, I mentioned them in the key drivers. One is the governments in the GCC and around the world are increasing the electricity tariff for supply from the grid. Uh, yeah. This definitely creates an opportunity for, for, for the solution providers like you, for the customers themselves, to go for the solar and, and battery solution. The other driver is the falling uh, prices or cost of the battery and, and the solar. So both of these things make the, the, the off-grid as well as on-grid solar and battery storage solutions more attractive. But I will go to you, Shivang, with, with the same question or where uh, Swapnil left us, that do you agree that uh, the battery storage uh, um, integration with the solar is a key application area uh, for the C&I in Oman? And what are the challenges uh, you feel for this solution? Uh, Over to you, see. Shivang. No problem. Uh, see what uh, before I answer that uh, question specific to CNI, uh, I would say see when you talk about battery specific systems, uh, let's let's you know uh, segregate and uh, let's say that it's a great technology battery integration with solar and it's very stable as of now, but you have to define the application. You know as what uh, Swapnil said, similar to you know similar questions we also get from villa owners that okay why can't I run my system or my villa on battery 24/7? So the same question happens. You know the application of a battery-based system is completely different than an on-grid system. 
okay so that's where we educate the clients okay for battery things do you have any electricity outages or do, is there is there a place is there a time when you don't get electricity so you are you know dependent on battery so battery specific systems when you talk about coming to cni the advantage which it can bring is you like what i, I was uh, seeing the presentation by anu and it was like you can store electricity and you can use it when the peak is happening you know during may to july uh, between i think 12 to 4 the tariff is highest uh, across the year it is 67 beza so, so what you can do is you can store the energy during the off peak hours and use it during the on peak hours but it again brings a challenge for a system of industrial scale we are talking about we are not talking about a 10 kilowatt or a 20 kilowatt system it will be hundreds or you know 200s or even 500 kilowatts of system and that system has to cater to that amount of load with only batteries that's what we are talking about so when you say something something like this to a company owner whose operations are completely dependent on electricity and who cannot afford any kind of you know uh, shortages or mishaps happening on that side that is the first challenge which will come to the mind second is the definite the regulatory authority because i won't say that they won't allow it it's like again you know the problem of education the problem of ecosystems where people are not yet uh, educated enough or have not seen enough solar projects enough solar projects when i say then it should be like you know hundreds and hundreds of projects are happening here and there and they are very much okay then okay solar is fine that's not something very new to us but solar itself is a very new thing for oman market i would say compared to other markets and when you introduce something like this into a market where which has not been seen by the regulatory people i'm not talking about industry industry people have seen it but when they who are you know the responsible people for the stability of the network when they have not seen it before definitely you will have some sort of you know resistance coming from them but what i believe and what i have seen once you go to them try to explain to them with the help of multiple meetings and you know demonstrations there might be a chance that they will also you know allow you to do some sort of uh, you know these kind of pilot projects or you know that's where it has to start but it has not started yet the thing which has started for you know battery based systems is definitely off grid applications like you know pdo desert areas where you don't have grid and uh, you know near oil oil rigs are, cannot use it because the stability is the biggest uh, requirement for uh, for a drilling application you cannot afford any kind of you know uh, what do you say uh, shortage of electricity so definitely when you say you know cni and battery potential is always there technology is always there but application wise you know uh, i would say uh, we are still you know a bit behind on that if i if maybe if there would have been at least 100 solar projects in commercial segment in uh, in and around muscat then definitely this would be the next step to it they like uh, as you all I... know means all yeah please yeah. carry on yeah uh, if i have understood correctly um you are highlighting the need. I think you have made two points very well. Um, one is the stakeholder engagement, stakeholder um, education, whether it is the government regulator, utilities or customers. And then mm -hmm. related to this one is the overall ecosystem. But at the same time, you that do you acknowledge that and when you refer to a uh, presentation uh, as well, are you acknowledging that the battery has limited application because its cost is, is still higher uh, that's why you don't see much integration with the solar is this see, the point i'll be I'm... frank i'll, I'll yeah. be very frank battery cost is still very high to be honest on to, yes. to be applied to be going into a commercial scale it's still very high plus stability or reliability on a solution is still untested i won't say it is not there but it is still untested in this part of the world for a commercial application but we have seen for these projects even at the utility scale and, and industrial scale in other parts of the world yeah exactly we have seen it but that's what i was saying in this part of the world it is still untested and you need you need uh, you know regulatory authorities to be you know uh, along with us when you try something like that so that's what you know i was saying that once you have first step covered you know uh, more and more projects industrial scale projects are there the next step is this 
you know when you go to a customer and say that okay well, this is fine let me you know uh, do peak shaving we call, they would have they call it as peak shaving Yeah. you know they remove that peak from the residential and push push it towards so uh, from the uh, discon and put it onto the you know solar particulates the solar uh, system so this is something it's not new i know that this solution exists in industry from uh, at least 4 5 years and many companies have you know mastered this technology so i would say this is market specific that's what even i tell i told anand when we were speaking with anand anand i told this is very new who segment for this particular market but still you know this panel discussion would be interesting so let's you know uh, talk and see what's what's uh, you know everyone has to say no, so is, uh, yeah. definitely you know maybe yeah, 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 yeah that's a scenario you. actually that's how sivan what i would like to add on that uh, sorry to cut you up tab see peak no, hours no. has been already uh, taken care uh, by the grid connected system so i don't see much scope or opportunity no, no. for battery operated system except the area where grid is not available then yes so you what, I was, is what i was saying no no you are right uh, peak time but what i was saying is uh, sometimes you we, what you can do normally if you put a normal grid connected system it will run from 6 to 6 okay so you mm. have a savings from 6 to 6 what with this type of solution which sengro is or other manufacturers are giving you can remove that from 6 to 10 you can take it to the battery and But then that is everything you are on power. the client that's what i am exactly. saying that's it addition exactly. that battery kills the oh. whole uh, you know financial uh, scheme correct 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 you are right on that so what i was saying is you know it is technologically it is possible yes it's not like you know, it's a good solution you know you can talk about solution wise it's good but you know coming to that's what i told after it's very expensive battery is very expensive let's not uh, you know <laughs> go into that line but still you know solution wise it's a good solution let let's not uh, you know uh, demean that uh, technology i would say we are surviving based on battery only by the way <laughs> <laughs> no no but uh, it, it's it's an opinion okay it's not it's not something you know a statement it's an opinion So okay, please, okay. Shivang, please continue. The audience are enjoying, and you guys are. I, I love to be interrupted, uh, Shopil. So thank you very much for interrupting. I think you make my life easier, the job easier. Uh, the whole purpose of the moderator is to provoke uh, the, the 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 discussion. And if if you have uh, any points to challenge or share or disagree, I think that that's definitely. Although, uh, Shopil, I think. if you are making this point again it's uh, we are all talking from our experience and our opinion the batteries have great application uh, or a business case in the grid connected as well however we are cut and again i'm always highlight from the economics or financial side two drivers who are working and they are not yet there even for the con grid connected ones if the uh, electricity tariff from the utility from the regulators are high enough and there is a big difference between uh, off peak and peak time for example what we call time of use tariff for example um and the battery cost is economic i am sure that what um, shivang was highlighting or i know um, uh, mentioned the presentation we will have a a case for the battery to to add yes please uh, Uh, Burma sir, please add. Uh, I'm sorry, I have, I have to. I, you know, I thought I should. Uh, I should intervene at this point of time. No, please intervene. Uh, <laughs> like to have this entire discussion in a different perspective. I mean, this is uh, we all are talking it about today. You know, what is the tariff? What is the requirement? What is the need? What is uh, what is the cost? Whether the project is viable or not? So we are all talking it about today. now understand one thing very simply a product like this or any product which has to be introduced into a market is a work of close to around one and a half two years or maybe even more than that now this product when they are produced they are produced for the next or any technology when it is getting introduced it is getting introduced not for uh, uh, you know one day or one year or two uh, you know two years it's for the future now uh, what all this discussions on a current perspective uh, in a current situation where uh, power tariffs viability uh, power cost of power production is itself is subsidized so in all those contexts this is fine 
the validation check is what is next three years or five years down the line. Are there are there regions or the countries which are already experienced what we are going to experience in the next two years or three years time? So I think the the viability of of this system or any other system for that matter uh, should not be seen only on our only on a today's context. It has to be checked for the next at least three years to five years time. That's one. Second is the entire solar industry. Uh, I mean, this is my personal views, uh, not uh, uh, trying to uh, hurt anyone. This entire region, the you know, Jordan was the first uh, country who took the lead and the penetration of solar is highest, maybe around 15, 16% or maybe even more than that. The second was, uh, you know, UAE. Oman, uh, two years now, or maybe I think three years of the policy, speed is little low, it's now picking it up, but the but the required infrastructure or the drivers are in place. Then there is Saudi, Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait, and all these things. So in all this reason, uh, region, the entire solar industry is not, you know, it is at a very initial or advanced stage. We might not have been seen, uh, I mean, we can say that uh, if you leave Jordan, it's two years, three years, four years old. Entire industry is not mature. The cost of PV module, what it used to be 10 years back and what is the cost of PV module today is totally changed. The cost of battery, also the lithium, uh, you know, batteries, what it used to be two years back, what it is today, they have changed. So the product life cycle of, in terms of the price, in terms of the demand is changing and evolving. May not be today, but for tomorrow, for sure. That this is very this cool, I would like to uh, Varma, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by your optimism. And this is what we want, that we take stock of what, where we are, what are the drivers at present. But things will improve, will change, and the, the, the battery will make uh, economic case, business case for future as the drivers will change. Um, let's move to uh, Marcel. Marcel, do you want to share um, uh, your take on the... Uh, financial viability, for example, or or, or the feasibility of the, the, the battery uh, integration with the solar. Yes, uh, just a quick point on what was mentioned previously. I think uh, as a manufacturer and our business plan that we look at Oman is not to sell batteries from day one. I think the goal is to educate the market. The market needs to understand why this product will be needed in the future and how they can benefit from that product. I think uh, from SunGrow's perspective, the strategy is to be sustainable, to make sure that when it penetrates the market, everybody understands it, everybody can use it. And if you think about it now, you know, the, the battery solution that I'm looking presented now, six months from now, there's going to be a different solution because that's how fast the market moves forward. Uh, SunGrow as a, as a manufacturer also increases the footprint. You know, if you look at panels, we are at 650, 700 watt panels now. And if you think two or three years ago, we had 330 watt panels. So I think the goal should be education. The goal should be pilot projects. Get, get that up and running. Help some key strategic partners. PDO, uh, Oman Water, and all of them to to get a residential CNI and the utility side side up and running. Uh, I just want to make also, uh, you know, in in Dubai, we never thought that microgrids and batteries would work. And uh, I found out recently that a company installed sixty microgrid systems over the Dubai Sharjah region which is quite a lot of systems, you know, a battery is quite expensive. So if you take a battery in regard to the grid tight system, you can add at least about 40 to 50% more of the cost. So there is need for it. The problem is we have to work hard to get it. And to go convince those people, you spend three, four, five, six months to convince them, you, you know what, a generator running, it's fuel and maintenance. But to integrate that generator with PV and batteries, that's a huge uh, investment. But uh, sometimes it works out for you. Sometimes it doesn't work out for you. And uh, yeah, 
focus is education. If you look at what happened in Africa, uh, I think the the thing that is the Achilles heel for solar, if I can say it with the utmost respect, is grid stability. I think uh, if you look at Africa, the grid is very unstable. It's it's dirty energy. It is fluctuating. It, you get power outages for 16 hours, and that helps the business model for batteries. So it's a high cost of power generation, and it's not stable. So those are two factors that adds to your 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 full uh, opex and apex of the of the system. So. Uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic about Oman. I think there is potential. Uh, I will put a lot of effort into Oman. I'll go meet all the people, try to educate the clients, try to make them understand, go to the remote areas. Uh, there's also quite a key thing that I found very interesting in the last six months is floating systems with batteries and everything on water, which also uh, might be something interesting to look into. But yeah, you, you have to do the, the legwork in the country, go understand what it is They visit all the sectors in the country, and uh, yeah, plan according to that. Marcel, thank you very much. Very insightful. Um, uh, your take, your optimism, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's very cool. Uh, I was looking at uh, our time. If we have any questions from the audience, we can address them. Otherwise, if uh, Emrit Mandel, if you are back and you want to uh, share your further thoughts on um, the, the storage options, with how feasible they are uh, for the yeah. C&I, you have heard some of the discussion. Right. Uh, sorry, sorry, my network is not uh, good enough. So, But I, you have the opportunity now to, to impress us with yeah. what you, your take, take on, on the feasibility of the storage options. Uh, yes. And if if this is op, uh, feasible, really, what should be the optimal size? We we briefly touch on this one, but we would like to hear from you. Right. So uh, I was uh, I was uh, listening to other panelists very carefully, and yes, uh, Mr. Shivang uh, pointed out uh, very good points like the peak sharing part. So if if we talk about if if we talk about the Oman, so it it can be segmented in two parts. One is the areas which are connected with the grid. So there is MEDC, uh, Mazan, Mazun, so far they are connected grid. And the other part is uh, which is handled by Tanvir and the or the like the uh, remote areas or the interior areas of the Oman. So these are two two areas. Uh, and uh, so peak saving we can introduce in these areas like uh, which are connected to the grid. Mostly the industrial areas surrounding the Muscat region or Sur region or Suhar region. And uh, the and we, we can we can uh, introduce. I mean, there are chances that and we are having the leads from these businesses, uh, the, the, and we have to check the viabilities. And we are we are actually in progress in a process to uh, doing these uh, projects for uh, a battery BSS uh, based. And uh, the scale could be like 250 kilowatt to 500 kilowatt, or let's say max to max one megawatt with a battery storage for let's say 5000 kWh, or I mean five megawatt hour per day. Or let's let's say uh, 300 megawatt hour per, hour per day. So that can be that can that uh, this can be catered to this uh, uh, inter industrial uh, segment. And for the off-grid areas uh, or the which are managed by Tanvir or the remote areas or the villages areas, we can con we can consider it as mini grid option. So yes, uh, SunGrow inverters which are uh, mostly made for these uh, uh, mini mini grid applications like. We can introduce a. It can be hybrid with a wind, or it can be hybrid with a DG, or it can be totally with 24 into 7 our 24 into 7 power supply with solar only. So we can design the systems very easily. And the most important part, I think, uh, my panelists also know. I mean, uh, the the part is that the technology. I mean, we can also able to design the systems. And uh, earlier, like four or five years or uh, six years back, there was no, there was very limited kind of tools or design tools available which you can use to uh, estimate the actual generation output or actual you can you can fine tune the system but today there are a lot of softwares i mean pv system even i mean everybody knows about the pv system here in the panelists so pv system even they have integrated uh, the battery storage into the grid connected model and their plan plan predict and uh, there are the the, the, the sungro even has their own design tool all the all the i mean not even sungro i mean the all the 
major manufacturers or the major suppliers of the inverters and the BSS technology, they have their own design tools. So this is this is this is the available now. It was not there in uh, back in uh, four five years. So technologically, yes, we can able to design a more uh, uh, cost efficient system, and we can present the uh, the uh, the, uh, the main problem that there is the cost of battery is very high, and we can we can show it that uh, the cost is battery is very high, but that is uh, the technology of if you consider about the if you if you're talking about the LAP technologies, which is having a seven years to ten years of warranty itself. And they have the life, uh, the life cycle of more than ten years. So this technology in the integration will would make obviously the uh, it will make more more cost attractive rather than it is not being a like a, the payback is more much higher or something like that. So thing is getting better. I mean, uh, if if you look at the Indian market mostly because I am from India and I have been there in, for a long time and Indian market adapted this BS technology in a rapid scale in the last three years. So the uh, of most of the projects coming from the government, either from the government tenders or private uh, private players, they are doing these uh, BSS technology, uh, BSS based projects uh, in utility scale. I mean, like uh, 100 MWH uh, project, project or like 200 MWH, 500 MWH. So uh, chances are there. I mean, uh, uh, other region is following that, and we have to follow the uh, technology based uh, feasible, viable, uh, feasibly uh, uh, good options. And obviously, the technology of, uh, on the life, uh, lifetime of the lifespan of the battery is very much important in this case uh, for the BSS mostly. So yeah. yes, uh, technology. If we uh, follow the technological development, uh, both on the design segment, both on the installation segment, and the life cycle uh, way, then uh, yes, there are huge potential in this market. And we are seeing. I mean, we are having the, uh, we are getting uh, clients. I mean, people are interested. Uh, it's not like that they are. They are not aware. I, I mean, I, I would not say that uh, all everybody is aware of this thing, but people are getting educated, and they are they are know uh, who, uh, do's and don'ts and which is required and which is not, and they are interested to get into the uh, BSS projects. Uh, they are yeah. very much. I can say that. Yeah. Yes, Amrit, we missed you for a short division, but you have overcompensated your short absence with, uh, with this last you. take. Again. Uh, I was looking at the the time we are almost I think almost done with the time, but uh, looking at the chat uh, box, I see few comments. Uh, uh, let me summarize them uh, so that we can, can uh, check any light on this one. Some brother uh, does not see uh, the, the the neat case of some of the bank, the grid application. Uh, so he didn't raise any question. But then we see Michael um, uh, basically saying that he had they have designed utility scale solar PV the storage in Australia and UAE, and he would like us to share uh, if there are opportunities uh, for similar utility scale systems with uh, uh, in in Oman. So if anybody of you have any information, you can share now or uh, chat with uh, Michael. Uh, uh, Anand, uh, how much time we have? Because I, I can see that we are over our allotted time. Uh, sir, we still have five minutes. So. OK. Yes, sir. Good. Uh, Anand, course, uh, uh, yes. uh, there was a one point I think which is uh, grossly missed by most of us that yes. is energy uh, that is actually energy independence so uh, I mean I would request uh, a few of the specialists especially from a Sangro side if what is their take on uh, not only on the market but on the product and the technology I mean this is they are basically setting the direction you know it, it may be uh, it may be achieved uh, tomorrow or maybe after some time but is that you know direction uh, is right or wrong so i think uh, we should have some inputs from them as well yes anyone from sun group um, yeah, uh, marcel or anoop i think if yeah, anoop sir is still yeah. there so yeah. if I they want to respond yes i just explained like the product uh, the major advantage like uh, when we're talking about the CNDI products portfolio, generally people have one or two products and they will have uh, one battery or maximum two or three batteries and one single PCS of 110 or 200, something like that. 
but what what sangro is come up uh, with uh, our experience from the markets we are doing 50 kilowatts and you can go for the multiples of that trade so when we talking about the applications uh, uh, in the system like it can be scaled up to 6 uh, 300 kilowatt by uh, off grid applications and you can do for almost uh, i think it's like a six battery times two and times uh, uh, six pcs so you can do that multiplications of six into two into six so it's very big combinations you can make it with our products so you just uh, need to analyze the load profiles and you also need to calculate what is the dg's uh, values like especially for the uh, kv rating as well as the uh, dg fuel consumption characteristics and need to be arrived right uh, load uh, files and light capacity and then it is get it synchronized with the dg otherwise what will happen you will install something uh, uh, like like it's like a non standard kind of things will install and later you will have end up with a lot of uh, operations issues so the products uh, is very much uh, easy but simple to connect with the 400 volt applications and when we when we're talking about the dg integrations we have a couple of experience in the european markets for the dg synchronizations so our systems are uh, ems is capable to communicate with the various uh, dg controllers and we can independently control our uh, operations and we will not touch the dg controller as well whereas the others people will have the controlling system with both PV and DG control. So we will not do that. We, based on our experience, we take care of the supplies area like PVS, uh, PCS, battery, and the inverters uh, in, in order to meet the uh, best LCOE for the uh, end client. So our product is very much uh, uh, integrate, very much easy to integrate with any existing system. As long as we can go for a new system. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, uh, Can I take a minute? Please, please. Uh, uh, in your product range, I was going through these slides. You have mentioned as long see hybrid. No doubt, there is a huge uh, scope. We can have a multiple or at least two or three source to integrate, and then we can come up to meet the demand load requirement. That that is accepted. That anyhow it is going on. We are doing it. Is not something new which we are talking about. Here I am talking very specific, very niche market where one client is blocked with their mindset, they have generator, they are operating maybe 12 hour, 24 hour based on their load requirement for 500 kilowatt or sometimes megawatt or sometimes more also. They are not willing to go with generator operation anymore, number one. Number two, do we have, because I was uh, hearing you have got 300 kilowatt something as a maximum uh, off-grid uh, system which can deliver. So how about the bigger uh, system requirement and how about the battery backup where we have to talk about 24 hours operation plus at least two or three days as an autonomy to address to the client in case of any wet weather condition. Okay. So uh, since we are more, morely concentrate for the C&I uh, this today's discussion. So the product is uh, uh, the one which we explained is ST129 CP 50 HV yes. for c &I application. So if you have something like more than 300 or 500, 600, something like that, if you have two different load points, then we can go for parallel systems in the same place. Because the PCS at a times maximum, it can support for 300 by paralleling six units. When you cannot have a string kind of arrangement in that case. Uh, the, 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 the thing is, like as I mentioned in the presentations, like the first uh, PCS will act as a master PCS and the rest of the PCS mm. will be parallelly connected to the master one. The EMS will be placed in the master PCS. So that's the cap, uh, that's the maximum capability at this moment. Off grid, we can uh, go for 600, uh, sorry, six units of uh, 50 kilowatt. But when we're talking about the large utility, we have an another products which starting from 2.7 megawatt to 6.9 megawatt, and the battery capacity starting from uh, uh, 2.37 megawatt hours to 4.75, which is 40 feet containers, and mainly go for the utility scale applications. But uh, that is not viable for the uh, CNI applications area. So that's why we come up with this solution. And there are some certain cases, the plants will have uh, one or two DGs and uh, two different load points. So you know you may not be operate both load points from the same DG in parallel when this DG is going to operate. So in that cases, you have to identify the load maximum demands and then penetrate the PV 
along with the uh, CNDI BSS solution to the grid. We have right. a solution, but the application scenario is different. Yeah, we normally Anup, get into the application scenario first, then we try yeah. to offer the solution. No, thank okay. you very much, Anup. Uh, you and Sanguru already have got a lot of queries, even from our speakers. I'm sure uh, they will engage with you offline. Uh, I, uh, with the host permission, I would like to close this webinar. Uh, we have very insightful discussion on, on the key challenges. We are all optimistic that the CNDI solar integration with the battery are on track. Uh, the drivers will evolve to make them, um, uh, make them more uh, economic solutions for uh, uh, the on-grid as well. Off-grid applications are already there. We highlighted for the audience uh, that stakeholder engagement, stakeholder education is important. The ecosystem has to evolve in the countries to support. Uh, we have not lost hope in any other country. We have seen, even in the comments from the audience, that these solutions on-grid, off-grid, utility scale, commercial and c and uh, segments have seen uh, battery uh, solutions around the world. So we can, I'm sure, can learn from each other and, and, and contribute. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anand. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So thank you very much to all our ex esteemed panelists for this wonderful session. And a very special thanks to Aftab, sir, for superbly managing the session. Thank you, everyone, for extending your time and support for the event. A special thanks to our partner, SunGrow, for, uh, for the support to this webinar. Uh, we promise you to come back with more exciting topics very soon. Now the floor is open for networking. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Anand. Thank you, Anand, and team. Thank you. Thank you, Anand.